There we go. So I was just very mindful of the fact that um, some of you may not even have known my background because you signed up for the programme. So I just wanted to give you a little bit about me and my background and how I got to this point. I call myself the Sugar Free Coach. I am a wellbeing mentor. I've got um, a, a wellbeing qualification, a women's wellbeing qualification, and I'm also a nutritional therapist. And I've been in the wellbeing industry for 20 years. I've always worked specifically with women. Um, I used to work as a personal trainer. I've worked with women, helping them understand how to manage their weight more effectively, how to exercise um, to manage their weight more effectively. And as I've aged, when I first started out as a personal trainer, I used to run buggy classes and circuit classes and stuff outside. And as I've aged, I've moved more and more into that kind of midlife phase where we talk a lot more about perimenopause and menopause and just how to manage your well-being as we move into to kind of that slightly middle period in life where things can change and things can go slightly awry or go the wrong way in terms of we're doing the same thing as we've always done, but things are changing and we're not quite happy with them. So it's just about understanding how to manage that basically. So now I focus very specifically on uh, sugar and helping women to understand the impact that sugar has on their well-being. For me, ethics, integrity, authenticity are really, really important. You get what you see with me. I'm very real. I have like I said at the very beginning of the Sugar Free Challenge, I have three children. I have a busy business. I don't want to be creating special meals and with all sorts of special ingredients. I need to keep it as simple as possible for myself. And I understand and get it that you want to keep it as simple as possible for yourself as well. If you want to be successful with managing your weight, managing your hormones, getting better sleep, all of those, those things that we, we joined up for. So we're going to look at the three secrets to easy weight management this evening. But that also includes better sleep, balanced hormones, more energy, less brain fog, all the things that we kind of struggle with as we get through our 30s, 40s and into our 50s. So first of all, and it is no secret because you have been doing a sugar free challenge last week. But the first secret is to balance your blood sugars. Now, if you looked at any of my watched any of my lives last week, I shared the fact that the diet industry want you to consume um, foods that are full of sugars and sugar is the issue and we can balance our blood sugars and we can get our insulin under control that is the panacea to managing your weight to managing your sleep to managing your hormone balance and just to manage how confident you feel in your clothes so this is a really simple diagram to help you understand just what happens when our insulin is out of balance and what happens is when we eat something and it's and it's um, something that releases sugars into our bloodstream very quickly, insulin is released into the system and it spikes. I've been talking about that all the way through the last the last week. This red, this, this red um, line here that kind of goes high is your insulin spiking. But because the pancreas releases so much insulin, because the release of sugars into your bloodstream is very quick, um, the, the release of insulin is very quick into your bloodstream. It picks up the sugars really quickly and it removes them very quickly. And so consequently, you have a very fast crash in blood sugars when we are consuming something that is very high in refined sugars. So just a reminder, we talked up last week about that glucose spectrum. We've got this glucose spectrum that goes from red, sorry, greens, reds, oranges to beiges and whites. The greens, the reds and the oranges all contain antioxidants, which help to reduce the impact of sugar in terms of the metabolic process the body goes through to access that glucose in the sugar, in the carbohydrate that we're consuming. But they are also very slow to be released into your bloodstream. So they go through this process, but it's a much slower process. It releases sugars really slowly into your bloodstream. And so the pancreas will release insulin really slowly. If you're getting your carbohydrate sources are from the beige and the whites, so breads and pastas and cakes and cookies and refined sugars, all of those, um, all of those those sources, the beige and the white sources, are released very quickly into your bloodstream. And so your pancreas releases insulin very quickly. You have that big spike in blood sugars and a massive crash. And it's on this crash when we get into this low point down here where we might feel brain fog, we might feel really tired, we might not be functioning effectively, thinking clearly. And so consequently, the brain says, you need to eat something sugary and you need something sugary now. 
And so we reach for more sugar, which releases more insulin from the, in, the, um, from the pancreas. We have another massive spike, and then that, that spike results in another crash. And as we talked about last week, insulin is a very dominant hormone. So when it's high in the system, and it's up here at these peaks here, it will um, allow for the release of ghrelin, which is the hormone that tells us we're hungry. And it won't encourage the release of leptin, which is the hormone that tells us we're full. So where we wanna be is we wanna be in, in this green range here. We wanna have a line that just comes across really nice and steady across this green line here. And that is when insulin is released really slowly, it's released into the system, we still have lots of energy because we're not heading into this crash down here. Um, we're not having the brain fog, we're able to be productive, we're able to think clearly. But most importantly, when we're in that green line, between that green line, we're allowing the body to release leptin. And leptin is the hormone that tells us we are full and allows us to burn fat for fuel. So we become uh, more metabolically flexible. We have this, um, the body gets into this mode where it can start to access our fat reserves as our fuel source. And so where you want to be is in that, that range of where it says at the, the, um, the, at the end there, the range of blood sugar that your brain and your body want. That's where you want your insulin to be, to be consistent and steady. So how do we get that? Well, we, we discovered a lot of things last week on the seven day sugar free challenge. The first thing you need to be thinking about is eating protein for breakfast. When we eat protein for breakfast, our stomach is, first thing in the morning, our stomach is full of hydrochloric acid. And hydrochloric acid is designed to break down protein. It's not designed to break down carbohydrate. So for years, we've been told eat, by Mr. Kellogg, eat your carbohydrate for breakfast, eat your cereal for breakfast. Then it moved into, well, let's, let's get a bit more of a healthier breakfast. Maybe we'll have some granola or, or some muesli. But actually, if you dig into the, um, the uh, ingredients lists on, on granola and muesli, there's lots of added sugars in those sources of breakfast. So anything carbohydrate at breakfast time, whether it is granola or special K or toast, it's going to spike your blood sugars quickly. It's going to cause that massive spike first thing in the morning. So by half past 10, you will be hungry. If you eat protein for breakfast, it's a much slower release. Um, of sugars into your bloodstream, insulin can stay really balanced and we will release leptin. So we can start to see some weight loss beginning to happen because leptin is that hormone that allows us to stay full, but also allows us to start burning fat for fuel. And we need to be thinking about bringing more protein in at meal times as well. Again, we have been told for years that what we need to do is eat those complex carbohydrates. Personally, I call them processed carbohydrates. Bread, pasta, anything that's man-made basically is a processed carbohydrate. It's not a complex carbohydrate. It's not gonna allow your um, blood sugars to be released really slowly. It's still gonna release sugars into your bloodstream really quickly. And we've been told for years that we need that carbohydrate for energy. But if you remove that carbohydrate, that processed carbohydrate away from your plate and start adding more protein and more colors to your plate, you'll find that you've got far more energy throughout the course of the day. So by focusing on, you know, we only talk about a palm sized piece of protein. It doesn't have to be masses. We're not talking about keto diets. We're not talking about protein and fat diets or low carb diets. We're just talking about getting a balance on your plate, but getting a balance of all the things that help to balance your blood sugars really, really well. So when we eat good quality protein with lots of colors on your plate, that is when we can find insulin really nicely balanced. The protein will release slowly into your bloodstream. The colors provide all the nutrients your body needs to reduce inflammation, to keep insulin under control, and to, to keep them to ensure that the body is less stressed internally. When we're less stressed internally, we can cope with stress externally much better. And that is one of the consequences that you see as a result of reducing your sugar intake and your refined carbohydrate intake. You will start to see um, much, um, a much greater ability to be able to manage stress externally and to be able to manage your mood and your brain fog. It's not just about the weight, 
it's about getting all these other things that compromise our daily quality of life, getting all of those under control as well. And then if we understand as well, that if our insulin is really well balanced, when insulin is high, um, it's going to impact the hormones that allow us to go into a good quality sleep. When insulin is under control, we can release the right hormones to get better sleep, which will then in turn ensure that we can cope the following day. And we're gonna explore in a little bit more detail in a minute. Become a food detective, start to understand how food makes you feel. Does it make you hungry within two hours? If it's making you hungry within two hours, you had a spike and then you had a crash. And you want to get that really nice balanced insulin levels where you're not having to snack between meals. Again, been sold this myth for years that what we need to do is have five meals a day to keep our insulin balanced. Mm, you do keep your insulin balanced if you're, if you're eating the right things five times a day, but it still means it's high. So it still will have a compromised impact on our ability to release the sleep hormones, on our ability to produce enough leptin to burn fat for fuel. We won't ever burn fat for fuel if our insulin is high. Even if it's level, we're still not going to access that fat for fuel. And so by eating five meals a day, yes, we might keep our insulin balanced if it's the right choices, but it won't encourage effective weight loss. If we want weight loss, we need to be thinking about getting our insulin to a point where it comes much lower before our, an hour or so before our meal time in order to start burning fat for fuel. Some of you have noticed weight loss this week, and that is because you've allowed your insulin levels to come down far enough to mean that we can start releasing leptin as that, as that hormone that allows us to burn fat for fuel. Avoiding all the refined sugars, that goes without saying, and focus on counting, um, counting nutrients, not calories. As I said in the live that I did last week, the workshop that I did last week, um, you, when, you, when you get obsessed with counting calories, you can, you can eat within your calorie range, but you, can, you might not actually eat any nutrients on a day-to-day -day basis. And we need to be focusing on all of those nutrients that nourish the body, that reduce inflammation internally, that allow our hormones to come into balance naturally, and to mean that internally we're really well balanced. The body is a really sophisticated machine. When we give it what it needs in terms of the right nutrients, it can help to bring everything, it will bring everything under control internally, which means it will then naturally find the right weight for you. It will find the right energy for you. It will help you have better sleep. It will help you balance your hormones more effectively. It will ensure that your liver can clean, can clean up, which is one of the impacts as far as our hormone imbalances are concerned. The fact that the liver's not working properly. When we focus on consuming nutrients and filling our plate full of colours, that is when we will find internal balance, which allows us to then experience external balance as well reduced stress, easier weight management, better sleep, all of these things come from unlocking that panacea, which is getting our insulin balanced. There is no drug for insulin, well, there is a drug for insulin balance, <laughs> metformin, but that's used to treat people who have high insulin and high blood glucose levels and who are pre-diabetic. If you are someone who just is on this roller coaster of blood sugars every day, there's no way you can do that without just really starting to look at your diet and taking out um, those foods that spike your blood sugars and cause them to crash, spike them and cause them to crash. And when you get them balanced, that's when everything starts to become so much easier in terms of weight management, etc. cetera. Um, I'm just wondering if I'm, am I, yeah, I am recording. I can't see a recording button, but that's, don't worry. You don't need to worry about that. <laughs> okay, so that is your first secret as far as easy weight management is concerned think about balancing your blood sugars which is what we focused on last week now the second thing we need to think about is improving the quality of your sleep now sleep is seen to be the kind of fifth nutrient or the fifth pillar pillar of health underneath our well-being we've got our gut health and i'll and i can talk i'll talk a lot more about that in fed up to fabulous but that that is our foundation to our long-term well-being. And then we've got five pillars to health. Nutrition is the first one. Hydration is the second one. 
Uh, the right mindset is the first one. So um, um, nutrition, hydration, mindset, movement is the fourth one. And the fifth one is sleep. And it is only in recent years the scientists have started to discover just how important our sleep is. So what they're now suggesting that if we have a short sleep, we are, in, we are implicating a short life. It is the, uh, far, the fastest, or the fastest form of self euthanasia. Basically, if you're not having seven plus hours of sleep a night, it's massive in terms of what sleep does to us. And you can see here, just one hour less sleep a night unbalances our blood sugars, makes us 40% less productive the following day and causes changes to our DNA, which can cause all sorts of issues when we're not gonna go down that road right now. So when our sleep is disrupted, when we are not getting good quality sleep, that is when we can start to see internal uh, stress happening alongside those blood sugar imbalances. Now, when you understand this in a little bit more detail, you will start to understand why sleep becomes the secret, the second secret to easier weight management. They did a study, a Californian university did a study where they put term, two groups of people on calorie controlled diets. They were on exactly the same diet, but one group had eight hours sleep and one group had four hours sleep a night. The group that had eight hours sleep a night were 55% more effective at burning fat on this calorie controlled diet than the group that only had four hours sleep a night. The group that were having four hours sleep lost 70% muscle mass rather than fat mass. So the fat weight stayed on as stubborn weight and the weight they lost was muscle mass as opposed to fat loss. Um, so that so it just goes to show that sleep has a real impact on our fat burning capacity. But they've also now recognized that those people who are having less sleep a night are likely to eat about 500 more calories a day than the person that is just um, that is having their seven hours sleep a night, 500 more calories a day, just to basically keep our energy levels up. And usually those calories come from uh, snacking and sugar and all that kind of thing. Now, one of the first places to start when you're, if you're perimenopause or menopausal, um, the, if your, your sleep is co compromised, it's because your liver is struggling. So one of the things we do on the Fed Up to Fabulous program is really focus on liver health and get the liver working more effectively. And that will massively improve the quality of your sleep in the first instance. But also getting blood sugars balanced will really help to improve the quality of your sleep as well. Because when insulin is high in the system, we don't, because it's that dominant hormone, we don't release growth hormone, which is the hormone that allows us to go into a really good quality sleep. If insulin is high, by the very nature that insulin is high, cortisol is high, which is our stress hormone. And I'm not going to go into stress right now, but I did touch on it last week. If stress is high in the system, stress prevents us, high levels of cortisol present, prevents us from producing melatonin, which is a neurotransmitter that's really important to help move us into that um, slower pace in the evening and to kind of calm the brain down. If you're wired but tired at night, there's a good chance that you're not releasing your mind of right amount of melatonin to send you into a good quality sleep so if your insulin levels are high you won't be producing growth hormone which means your sleep will be compromised but also you can likely to be um, consuming about 500 more calories the following day and there's also now evidence to suggest that when we don't get the good quality sleep at night Ghrelin is the hormone that keeps us hungry, stays high in the system without us even trying to balance our blood sugars. It stays high and we find ourselves pacing around the kitchen trying to find something that will satisfy our need for sweet food and to give us energy. Um, and we end up eating those 500 calories more a day. And again, when sleep is compromised, funnily enough, we don't produce leptin, which is the hormone that allows us burn, to burn fat for fuel. 
Now there's so many other elements to sleep as well. Sleep comprom compromises our cardiovascular system. If we don't get enough of it, it compromises our immunity. If we don't get enough of it, um, it compromises our ability to manage our anxiety and our nervous system and how we cope with stress on a day-to-day -day basis. And it also compromises um, our, our, our ability to focus all of the um, major, uh, major catastrophic events like the Exxon Valdez disaster many years ago, which is a massive, um, for those of you that are younger than me, <laughs> um, where the, a massive um, oil tanker basically ran aground and spilled its oil everywhere. So when they did the investigation into that disaster, the reason for the disaster was uh, human error. And human error is always sleep related. And the pilot hadn't slept for 36 hours, basically. So our judgment is impaired when we don't get good quality sleep. So it's harder to make the decisions around eating healthily. And we just find ourselves um, uh, not focusing on, on ourselves, but just kind of doing what our, all our unbalanced hormones tell us to do a lot of this you know a lot of this decision making and how it is all linked back to what our hormones are doing internally what our insulin is doing what our cortisol do, is doing and also where we are in our cycle as well which is why with the fed up to fabulous program we focus on three areas we focus on sugar but we also focus on sleep and we also focus on hormone balance and when you get all of those in the right order and get them all in your ducks in order if you like that's when you can start to see real improvements in the quality of your well-being. So how do you improve your sleep? Well, the first thing you need to think about is getting into a regular sleep routine. So that is going to bed at the same time every night, maybe um, reading before you go to bed, making sure you're nice and hydrated before you go to bed. Your body needs to be hydrated in order to go to bed. And a lot of people say to me, but that means I have to get up and go for a wee in the middle of the night. But actually, if you're hydrated, you'll go back to sleep really quickly as well. And because your liver detoxifies through the night, it needs lots of hydration. So if you're hydrated when you go to bed, it will aid your liver to do the detoxification job that it needs to do without them bringing you into a lighter phase of sleep where you wake up and you can't settle back down again. So a regular sleep routine, maybe a bath, uh, and turning, starting to turn the lights down, keeping the room cooler, so keeping a window open, um, and reducing the use of our um, our phones as well. So the blue light on our phones and our devices will hit the back of our eyes anytime after about eight o'clock. It hits the back of our eyes and tells us that it's daytime. Uh, and that's when we release cortisol, that hormone that I mentioned in response to stress. Cortisol is a really important hormone. We need it in our body but we need it in the right way. We need it to rise through the course of the morning and then to be dropping off through the course of the afternoon, not to be staying constantly high. If we are um, looking at our phones on devices late into the evening, that blue light hits the back of our eyes and then we, um, our body thinks, oh, it's daytime, so we'll release cortisol. So even if we're not stressed, we're releasing cortisol, which is preventing us from producing the melatonin, which helps us to go into that soporific state. We need to focus on improving our liver because our liver did, does that detoxification through the night, particularly when we're menopausal or perimenopausal. The liver's working overtime to keep all the hormones balanced and to try and get rid of all the chemical estrogens we're exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis. So we need our liver working really efficiently. It's dead easy to do to get your liver working properly. The first place to start with getting your liver working properly is um, to be eating more green food. In Chinese medicine, the liver is a green organ. So the more greens that you can get on your plate, like we've talked about already, all those colors, lots of good quality protein, that will help to um, improve your liver function. Um, be eating before seven o'clock where you can. This is because we want your insulin levels to be coming back down again when you go to bed around 10 o'clock. As I said before, if insulin is high in the system, it's a dominant hormone. And so it prevents us from producing growth hormone. And so we don't go into that good quality sleep. If we, if we have insulin under control and coming down, growth hormone can be produced and we can get into that first really restorative um, phase of sleep when we go into the first phase of sleep we have these massive brain waves that kind of clean the brain and clean the whole of the body repair the muscles get rid of all the waste out of the muscles that have been created through the day and get rid of all the waste in the brain lots of research now to show that when we don't have good quality sleep it can speed up 
early onset dementia and other um, sort of um, neuro neuro uh, related illnesses. So the more we can get our routine into a place where we're trying to eat before seven o'clock so our insulin levels can be coming lower, we will find that we'll be sleeping better. Some of you this week have reported that you've had better sleep um, as a result of, of cutting out the sugar. So your insulin levels are not so high in the system, which has meant that you've been able to produce the growth hormone. So sleep really is that second secret, getting your blood sugars balanced, getting your insulin under control, improving your liver function, and then doing these other little tweaks around it, whereby you're improving your sleep routine, reducing your phone use at night, keeping the windows open so the room is cooler. All of these things can really contribute to better quality sleep. When you have better quality sleep, you make better choices the next day, your hormones are better balanced, and you can then do that three meals a day thing where you're then bringing the insulin levels under control, leptin can be released, and you can start burning fat for fuel rather than feeling like you're pacing around the kitchen all the time trying to find something that is going to keep your energy levels up because you're you're on the back foot, basically. You've been on the back foot all day because you had a rubbish night's sleep. We've all been there when we've had a rubbish night's sleep. It's very rare for me to have a bad night's sleep now, but if I do have a bad night's sleep, I really notice it the following day, how much it impacts my mental clarity, my ability to be able to function, but also, most importantly, how much I am consuming on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of all those extra bits and pieces that I probably don't really need to con consume I just do because my my body is a bit out of whack when I've not had a good night's sleep. And if you're functioning like that all the time, if sleep for you is compromised all the time, the consequence of that into your daily life is huge. The consequence of that into your ability to be able to manage your well-being is huge as well. So you really need to be focusing on how you can improve your sleep and putting into place some simple things, reducing your phone use, trying to eat by seven o'clock. If you can't eat by seven o'clock, and I do get that, again, sometimes when running kids around or, you know, there's things to be done or, you know, partners aren't coming in from work until later or what have you, try and adjust your day so you're eating a bit more at lunchtime. I had someone who did um, Fed Up to Fabulous a couple of, uh, I think it was sometime last year, and she had kids that did swimming club. And so she used to eat slightly more at lunchtime and then take like a soup or a salad with her in the evening so that she could eat it. So it wasn't leaving it too late into the evening before she did fed up to fabulous. She was just coming in and eating a bowl of cereal and then wondering why she wasn't getting very good sleep and she wasn't having getting a lot of energy. Um, so really focusing on your sleep and your sleep patterns will make a massive difference to your day-to-day -day well-being and your ability to be able to manage your weight more effectively. Bear with me, I just need to have a quick drink. Okay, so the third secret, and I alluded to this earlier on in the week, and that is self-belief. And this is something that we all put ourselves so far down the list of priorities when it comes to women. We don't have that self-belief that we can achieve it. And our subconscious mind is so powerful and it will tell us the things we want to hear. So if we tell ourselves that we're fat and we don't look good in this and I feel uncomfortable, your subconscious mind will play out those, those, um, those messages and say, well, actually, that's how you're feeling. That's, that's, that's who you are. You, you don't feel comfortable. Everything's a trial. If you tell yourself that managing your weight is hard work, that you don't want to have to go on a diet again because it's hard work and it's restrictive and you'll feel hungry all the time. That's exactly what happens. And it doesn't have to be like that. You've seen this week, for those of you that did manage a little bit of your weight, a weight loss this week, you've been able to do that without feeling restricted. You just need to unlock the door basically and understand that it doesn't have to be about obsessing over calories. It can be very much about nourishing your body and feeling vibrant and confident every single day when we eat the right foods. But to do that, you need to believe in yourself. And you need to have that level of accountability. You need to, that's why for some of you going into this, um, the Sugar Free Challenge this week, you were a little bit um, nervous about it, but you've actually found it's been easy to do because it's ha you've had that, that space of accountability where everybody has been working together to keep each other accountable. 95% of people who achieve success do so when they've been held accountable. We're only 60% likely to achieve success 
when we're not accountable. So much more likely to achieve success when we're working with either an accountability buddy or part of a group and part of a community. We all crave community. We all want to be part of something that we are human beings. That's human nature. We want to feel like we're in a space where other people are working towards the same thing as we are. And we wanna be able to develop that mindset for success. So focusing on the positive things that we have done rather than focusing on the things that we haven't done. So one of the things I often say to clients when I'm working with them and they'll come to me and they'll say, oh, I had three chocolate biscuits. And I'll say to them, okay, well, you only had three. You didn't have the whole packet, you just had three. Next time when you're tempted, let's bring it down to two. And the time after, let's bring it down to one. And let's take those baby steps towards achieving what we want to achieve long-term. But when we see it as a success, rather than something that we failed at, that is when we will achieve what we want to achieve, focusing on all the good things that we're doing rather than the things we're failing at. And when we focus on all the good things that we're doing, that's when we can really achieve the results that we're looking for. And we can start to work towards feeling better about ourselves, feeling more confident in our clothes, moving towards that long-term well-being that we all want to achieve. We all want to achieve longevity. Um, and now is the time to start putting that in place and doing it in that environment of support and an understanding of people in exactly the same place as you are. There's a great quote and I think it's, I'll mention it further on in the, in the slide. We're more likely to achieve success when we're in a community of people that are doing exactly the same as we are. So having that self-belief, having that mindset for success, knowing that you can achieve it, being surrounded by that community of people who are also doing the same as you and are having the ups and downs and are feeling the same as you are, some days better than others, and supporting each other and being accountable to them can be the thing that really helps you uh, to make the long-term difference, to make the lifestyle change. We're not just talking about a quick fix, we're talking about the changes that we need to make long-term to live a long and happy life. So, of course, I'm going to tell you about Fed Up to Fabulous um, because that is the next stage on from the seven day sugar free challenge. The sugar free challenge was for you to understand how I work, to see whether I'm the right person for you to work with and whether you can work with that approach that I take. Very much about baby steps, very much about focusing on day to day and making it as simple as possible. I've broken Fed Up to Fabulous down into three 21 day modules. So we focus on sugar free, um, being sugar free for the first 21 days. So continuing on from the sugar free challenge, um, and, but focusing as well on gut health and liver health and all the things we can do naturally to support both our gut and our liver. Then we move on to sleep as a, as a 21 day module. Um, and then we look at hormone balance. We take actions every single day. There's five goals a day to achieve. They're very simple to achieve. Um, and within those three 21 day modules, you have rest weeks and balance meals. So I'll explain these in a little bit more detail. Like I said at the beginning, I don't want to live a life of a monk. I don't want to live in this, in this kind of place where I can't enjoy food. And I, I want to be able to go out to eat with my family. I want to be able to enjoy eating things that I might not normally eat on a day-to-day -day basis. So our balanced meals are designed so that you can have that glass of wine, so that you can go out for that meal and have pudding if you want to have dessert. They're designed so that you can keep balance within that 21-day mo module. You get two balanced meals per 21 day module. So you could use them at the weekends. You could use them two days on the trot if you wanted to. You can use them whenever you want to, basically. Um, but they're designed to keep that flexibility within the 21 day module so that you don't go, oh, it's a disaster. I failed. You go, OK, well, that was my balanced meal. Now I move on. Changes the mindset completely, changes the way we approach things. And then the rest weeks are designed to be between each 21 day module so that within that rest week, you're still applying some of the things that you've implemented, but for 80 percent of the time so that you can begin to understand how you can build these lifestyle changes into your long term life. Because this isn't just like I said, it's not just a 12 week and you do it and then you're finished kind of thing. This is about making changes to help you feel better for the long term, to help you get on top of menopause, to help you improve your sleep, uh, to help you manage your weight more effectively. So we have those rest weeks and balanced meals to make it realistic for you to achieve it. We have daily goals to achieve, dead easy to achieve they are, those goals are, but along the similar lines of the sugar-free challenge, um, you get a self-care handbook, 
Gratitude Diary Food Journal, which we'll go into in a lot more detail on the programme. But most importantly, you also get that accountability. Um, so we, we do a, a wellbeing assessment at the beginning to see where you start and you do the wellbeing assessment again at the end to see how much progress you've made. We do goal setting exercises and you have that Facebook group for support and community. I come into the group once a week to do a bite sized um, educational video and we also have a weekly live Q&A session as well. And now for this round of Fed Up to Fabulous, I've actually also added in three masterclasses at the beginning of each um, module. So we'll do those live on Zoom as well. So you can really start to grow your knowledge about um, the kind of actions that you need to be taking to manage your long term well being. But you can also get me live on those calls to get um, to have conversations with and get questions answered as well. So we'll explain that in a lot more detail for those of you that do decide that further to fabulous is the next stage for you. Meal plans, recipe cards, sharing recipes all the time little daily challenges like we've been doing within the, set, um, the sugar free challenge lots and lots of content to keep you motivated on a day-to-day -day basis check-ins at the end of every day within the facebook group just a, a really lovely community that's there to support you and keep you um, moving forward so i'm just going to um uh see is belinda are you here can i find you on the screen and can you unmute yourself? Belinda is the person that yes, shared hi, this. So I'll just turn hi. my video on. Yeah, perfect. <clears throat> Belinda hi. shared this lovely testimonial down the side here. And Belinda was actually the winner of last, last Fed Up to Fabulous's um, uh, um, prize, <laughs> weren't you? I oh, lost my words there. Yes, <laughs> so, so lucky. <laughs> and Belinda, how did you feel before you started Fed Up to Fabulous? Um, before I started, I was my 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 main problem was I was so bloated and just always uncomfortable in my clothes. Um, another thing is is that my hormones were swinging so drastically up and down that um, I was just I was either I was either fine for a minute and then I would go down to being just angry and grumpy and couldn't deal with my kids or my husband or anything like that. So the, um, the hormones were all over the place, but yeah, physically I was really uncomfortable. I also had gotten into some really bad habits with um, just all of the choices I was making, not just around food, but around drinking as well. And I, I really had no idea. I, I, I thought I knew how to eat healthy. I thought I knew what would be good, but um, I couldn't do it. I just couldn't stick to it. I didn't have the willpower um, and I... I just constantly failed I tried and tried and tried and tried and then I just failed time after time and then beat yourself yeah. up because you failed oh all the time all the <laughs> time yes. yes so you won the place on the fed up to fabulous program as you were going through the program do you want to share with everybody how you felt about each challenge because I know you, each time you started the challenge you were like oh my god how am I ever going to do that yeah definitely um I I um, I was so so grateful to win well, the prize and I had done <laughs> yeah I, I was I still get a bit teary when I think about it um so I had done the sugar-free challenge twice because I just loved it and I, I I loved learning about um all of the information because you've just got so much knowledge Sue and it's so interesting and and so helpful and so easy to apply but anyway whenever we started each module I would look at the look at everything and just go, oh, nah, I can't do that. There's no way, you know, out of the five goals, I think I'll probably be able to get two per day and that would be it. And I just had no, uh, I mean, and, and I wasn't, I wasn't being dramatic. I was just thinking these habits are too ingrained, especially the sugar. Um, I was a sugar fiend big time and I just I believed that I couldn't do it. Um, but I put on my big girl pants and decided that I was going to try and the group was awesome and we all shared our challenges and so we got through that together and um yeah sure enough I I I did it and I think on the I think it was maybe the second week out of I think there's 35 boxes to tick and I ticked 34 of them and that's just I mean apart from obviously the, the benefits to my health that's um really great for your mindset as well because knowing thinking you can't do it and then realizing that you can do it 
it's just a great feeling, great feeling. And so do you want to share your results with us now then, Belinda? Yeah. Um, oh, sorry, before I forget, the other thing is, is that I don't know if this means anything, but I managed, if you can tell by my accent, I'm in New Zealand. So I managed to do the program from the other side of the world. So, you know, there's no barrier there. Um, so I, I, I was always bloated. I have got no bloating at all now. I feel so good. Um, my clothes are really comfortable. In fact, some of the clothes that I had before don't fit me anymore. Uh, so I, um, I don't know what it is in pounds or stone or anything, but I've lost almost um, seven kilos, um, which that that was my that was kind of my goal for like a six month period, and I'm there already, and it's still off, and I still um, I'm st I am still following the essential learnings from the program now, even though our course has finished but the um you know I, I still make those good choices so I am sleeping really well um I yeah no bloating I've got I have had some weight loss and I I just have this energy when I and I wake up early in the morning I wake up earlier in the morning than I used to getting up in the morning used to be hard it used to be really really hard um but now I just you know Right. the alarm goes off and I get up and then I get all my stuff done and I have full days and um and all of the all of the things that I've um that I've learned I've carried through and I have continued to do so it wasn't just oh I did it for the program and then I've gone back to my bad habits I have kept it and um it it's been I don't want to say it's been easy but it has been easy actually it wasn't a, it wasn't a chore it wasn't a really difficult task it just has been a lifestyle change so the lifestyle changes around my eating um drinking coffee um have changed and i i feel i feel so much better I feel so much better you can um, see it in your face yeah. as well your face is just really glowing oh, so your well. skin looks fantastic yeah. so um yeah really well done mm. and thank you so much for that and the beauty of the fed up to fabulous is that it's lifetime access as well so you, you can re keep repeating it, Belinda, and you can stay in there and you can keep contributing, but you can keep staying accountable to making sure that those habits really are ingrained long term. So thank you yeah. so much, Belinda, for sharing that with us. Really do appreciate thank you. your time. And you thank can go you to work for all your info. the start of your day. Yeah. Well, isn't it? <laughs> I am. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Belinda, for coming on and joining us. Appreciate that. So have you, as you've heard, oh, sorry, went too fast there. Sorry, because I'm coming to, to um, Theresa in a minute. Um, the next group programme starts on the Monday the 9th of May. It's dead easy to follow, fits into your life. It's not complicated to follow at all. I implore you not to go back to where you were 10 days ago when you started the Sugar Free Challenge. Even if for you, it's you can't manage the Fed Up to Fabulous programme, continue to do what you've learned through the Sugar Free Challenge and continue to really focus on keeping your blood sugars under control because it is life changing. I only take 10 people on the Fed Up to Fabulous program. Three of them, have, all three places have already gone. And the reason why I keep it to that limited number is because I want to be able to give you my full time support. So, and you do get lifetime access to the program. So once you go through that program, um, you then continue to stay in the group and you can keep repeating the program as many times as you want to. So I'm just gonna now bring on Teresa, um, who hopefully is here. Teresa, do you wanna unmute yourself? Because this is Teresa who also did the Fed Up to Fabulous program this time, last, last time. And some of you have seen this image before, um, but you can see just what a difference the Fed Up to Fabulous program has made in terms of um, Teresa's complexion. Uh, but the, all of those um, sort of browner marks on her face are all age spots. So she's li literally reversed the aging process by reducing her sugar consumption. So, um, Teresa, are you here? Yes, I am. Oh, hi, Teresa. Thank you for joining me. So, Teresa, saying just for the benefit of those people on the call tonight, do you just want to tell everyone how you felt before you started the Fed Up to Fabulous programme? Well, I kind of feel embarrassed um, about that first photograph because it is so awful. You shouldn't um, be embarrassed though, because it's really powerful. It shows it the is. progress that you made. Um, I, um, I, I bravely took a, a makeup free selfie and um, you can see the difference there. I think there was 10 weeks between those two photographs, um, also makeup free. So there's no 
no, no touching up, nothing. Um, but I think before I started, I, I was just embarrassed that I wasn't able to fit into my clothes. Um, I only chose those that just hid the lumps and bumps. Um, and I think I looked tired and clearly my skin wasn't great. Um, I'd been on just about every diet going um, with sort of varying degrees of success. Um, but the problem was as soon as I stopped, the weight just crept back on. So I ate quite healthily, I thought, um, but um, chocolate was my absolute downfall. I, I, I was a chocoholic and um, of course with lots of the sort of big diets, you can have a little bit of chocolate. And unfortunately I can't do that. It's, it's all or nothing for me. Um, lockdown of course didn't help like, you know, for lots of people. Um, and just I put on more weight as I started baking more and having something sweet just started becoming a craving that I just gave into. Um, so um, it, it, it's been it's been amazing. So tell us how you felt whilst you were doing the programme. How did it work for you in terms of fitting into your daily life? Um, I think because of the way you run the programme um, and it sort of builds progressively on new targets it didn't feel overwhelming although I have to say that I never thought in a million years that I'd be able to do it absolutely not um, but I decided I think there's a phrase you were used once and it was like to invest in yourself and um, for me that was quite a profound one because um, obviously it's it's quite an expense to do the course but then when I thought how much money I'd pay going to groups and over the years, and I needed something that, you know, I could just, um, well, invest in myself, give it my best shot. Um, and also how much money you were spending on chocolate as well. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, I think having the group was just amazing because that added to the accountability and everyone was so supportive. You didn't just have to post your... Um, your good days, the sort of the bad days, you know, the times when you were struggling, everybody was there to help you. Um, I think the hardest thing really was just changing some of my mindsets. Things like, um, you know, I've always reached for the low fat products um, and thought that that was what I should have. Um, and I didn't know, I didn't realise that actually I was just adding to my problems because of course they've added sweeteners and things which were, you know, affecting my hormones as much as sugar would have done so I think it was just changing those sort of mindsets yeah and so share with us your results then Teresa um, well I think it's sort of fairly holistic I think the weight loss is absolutely great um, my my nutrition has definitely improved and um, my skin I'm not going to say it but yeah it is much clearer um, I lost um, just over a stone and a half doing um, sugar free and fed up to fabulous um, and um, I've just carried on it's now it's now part of my life so that was from the 10th of January this year and I wouldn't dream of not doing it now it's just it's me now mm. uh, I can actually say now I've lost um, nearly another half a stone so I'm two stone down now um, so but the main thing is now that I actually understand what sugar does to my body I really don't want it anymore. I choose not to have it. Um, so I was addicted to chocolate before, as I've said, but now I'm choosing not to eat it. It's, it's just not worth it for me. I just say, no, I'm sorry. No, thank you. I don't eat it anymore. End of. And everyone's okay with that. Yeah, absolutely mm, fine. That's, that's who you've become, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Teresa. Thank you so much for sharing that with us this evening. I'm sure lots of people will be really inspired by, by your success over the last couple of months. So really well done. Really thank well you. done. Thank you. And thank you for joining us this evening. Yeah. Thanks, Teresa. So you're, if for those of you that do join Fed Up to Fabulous, you will see Teresa and Belinda yes. in the group because you do get lifetime access to it. So yeah, I'm going to come back. Yeah, you're just gonna to do make it again, sure that I polish up on a few things that yeah. I feel I could do better. 
Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Perfect. And that is the whole point of having lifetime access to it so that you can just keep on dipping back in again. Or if you know that you can do two of the modules and you can't do the third one, you can come back and do it the next time we, we do it and we keep repeating the program. So that initial investment, that initial one off investment then gets you that guidance and support long term, basically, without having to make any more commitments. So fed up to fabulous like um teresa said is it time to invest in you is it time to put your own mask on first is it time to start thinking about your longevity your movement your ability to be able to manage your weight your hormones etc cetera, etc cetera? the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and thinking you're going to get a different result Maybe it's time to start doing something a little bit different and looking at doing things differently. Fed Up to Fabulous is not like any other program there is out there. But as you can see from Belinda and, and Teresa there, it gets absolutely fabulous results. It does take you from Fed Up to Fabulous. <laughs> so you're probably saying, OK, I want to know about the investment for the program. It is a lifetime access to the program. So it is one off payments. You can either do a pay in full at 575 Three people have already signed up on the early birds that happened at the end of last week. You can sign up on the 199 a month for three months, or you can take option three, which is a payment plan of £80 a month for eight months. Uh, whichever you want to do is absolutely fine. If you go through my landing page on my website, if you want, if you do want to sign up, that is that the option on there is the 199 for three months. If you want to take either option one or option three, just drop me a message and I can send you a link for that. I can't at the minute make it work on my website so you've got all three options there but that's coming <laughs> so that is your investment in the program for lifetime access there's no other payments to make other than that that those commitments basically um but trying to make it as accessible for everyone as possible so that is the fed up to fabulous program after this i will put the link in the chat box uh, but you will get an email as well with a link to the fed up to fabulous but if you've got any questions at all drop me a message and i'll happily get on the phone with you and chat through any questions that you may have so the first three people to register alongside those three people that have already registered will receive a personal goal setting session with me before when we well, won't be before the sessions before the program starts now because we're starting next monday um, but during those first the first week or so, you will get a goal setting session with me so that we can really drill down on what's going to work for you in terms of setting your goals and helping to keep you accountable uh, long term. As I said, I only take 10 people on the program. So if you think it is something that you're really interested in doing, uh, either drop me a message or head over to my website and you can sign up through the link on my website. Or if you want to have a telephone conversation with me, more than happy to do that this week as well. Just, just, uh, just let me know. I'm more than happy to do that. Either drop me an email or send me a Facebook messenger. Uh, so the bit you're all here for, and that is the prize winners. Let me just stop my share and see what your lovely face is going to actually. Let's go through the questions. Uh, let me start from the top and work my way down. Uh, so my dad got some wholemeal bread rolls. He said healthy, um, as he knows that I'm trying to eat healthy. The wholemeal bread roll actually has sugar in it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So that isn't really a question. Does it work if you eat when you're hungry and not at specific times? Yes, it does. Now, um, uh, I uh, with, this is something we'll talk about on Fed Up to Fabulous in more detail. But you can do a little bit of intermittent fasting as well. I don't have a problem with intermittent fasting, and you, and I do encourage you to just think about when are you hungry and eating more intuitively. Uh, who asked that question? I can't do it. Lily. Yeah. So it does. You can you can eat more intuitively. Um, okay, that's fine. That wasn't a question. Okay, sometimes you can eat lunch, which is absolutely fine. Uh, I might be signed as my daughter. Sorry. <laughs> uh okay uh so it's maxine not lee um okay those aren't questions i'm sending as my husband 4 p.m is your example zone who was that oh did you manage to get through the 4 p.m so i'd love to know if you did if you managed to get your blood sugars balanced by the end of the week and you could get through the downfall 4 p.m um okay uh uh yeah okay yeah, you can join the seven days. You can join Fed Up to Fabulous without doing the seven day sugar free challenge. That's absolutely fine. That's no problem at all. Um, is there a cost to Fed Up to Fabulous? Yes, I've just gone through that. Great. Glad, glad you found the results good. Sintains is incredible. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Okay, great. That's lots of nice. Do you recommend supplements? There are supplements within the program. Um, who asked that question? I can't see that now. 
uh, I'm losing you, uh, Maria. Uh, there aren't supplements within the program, Maria, but I do talk about magnesium. I do talk about um, uh, vitamin D, not this time of year. Usually it's in the winter time that I talk about vitamin D. There are a number of other supplements I will talk about, but they're not required if you don't want to. I have ones that I recommend and that I can that people buy through me, but that's that's not a prerequisite fit to the, to the program, Maria. Um, okay, some group, good advice from other group members. Yeah, and that's the whole point is that everybody can really interact, Joe. So, so you are all here to find out who are the winners of the um, Fed Up to Fabulous and the two white weight programs. So the two white weight programs are um, uh, self-guided programs. You basically, um, we get you set up on the system and then you get a number of emails over the course of 21 days with guidance and tutorials to follow, et cetera, um, over that 21 days. But it's a self-guided program. It doesn't involve a Facebook group. It's just you, you kind of follow it and you do it's a accountability with yourself, basically. So you have tick charts and all that kind of thing. And then obviously Fed Up to Fabulous is um, the, 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 the 12 week program and you get access to that, even though it's, you win it as a prize, you get access to it. Um, uh, long term as well so I'm going to see whether the, cause you've got to be on you've got to be in it to win it I'm afraid you've got to be on the call in order to be able to win it so the first person on my list for the winning of the fed up for fabulous program is Rachel Godfrey is Rachel here I don't know where she is I don't think she is if you're here Rachel unmute yourself now but if she's not then Rachel you've missed out on that fed up to fabulous program Oh no, Rachel, you were the Fed Up to Fabulous winner. So in which case, I'm gonna move on to the next person who would have won Why Wait, but now moves up to win Fed Up to Fabulous, which is Libby Butcher. Is Libby here? Oh no, what am I gonna do? Where are all my winners? <laughs> I don't think she is. No, okay, well in that case, <laughs> the third person on the list who is here, who wins Fed Up to Fabulous is Linda Pearson. Linda, where are you? <laughs> you can unmute yourself and say hello if you want to. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so I'm absolutely. Just thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to the other guys not being on. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I'm, I'm really sure. Sorry. <laughs> I'll be in touch in the next few days with all the details, okay? So, uh, really well done. Thank Congratulations. You. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The so, um, so first winner on the um, Why Wait programme, uh, who is listed on Facebook as Catherine Clare? Is that your surname, Catherine? Yes. Catherine, you have won. <laughs> you have won the first place on the Why Wait programme. So again, I will be in touch in the next couple of days with the details for why wait for you as well, okay? So um, that is your 21 day self-guided program. So brilliant, well done. Now, Thank have you. Gone. You're welcome, you're very welcome. I haven't got another name on the list, so I need to go back and look at the Facebook group again and tell you who is going to be the third person to win the prize. Because I, I thought, oh, four names would be enough. At least two, at least three of those people will be on. So there's one more person to win a prize. So I will announce that into the Facebook group later this evening. It's a very arbitrary way of, of picking them. I get my daughter to pick, to give me a number and I pick them from, we kind of choose the seven posts and then I say, right, give me a number from, from one to 50 or however many comments on there. And she might say 46 and I'll count through to the 46 comment and that's the person that wins. So it's not a complicated process. So that is the reason why you have to fill in the uh, accountability posts. Uh, each week, each day, because you never know which one's going to be used as the as the um, as the prize winning accountability post. So well done, everybody. I'm just going to share. I've just shared into the uh, into the WhatsApp group the link to fed up to fabulous program if you want to look at it in more detail. But I just want to say thank you so much for joining me last week. Really well done on um, staying focused for the seven days. You should definitely be giving yourself a pat on the back. And if some of you started in a bit of a place of fear with a quite a lot of sugar consumption um so really well done for staying focused and getting that, that getting that far and yes definitely try and carry on i would highly recommend it as i said some of you won't be able to go on to the um fed up to fabulous start program that's absolutely fine and i really would encourage you to stay um to stay focused there is my facebook group um 
uh, free Facebook group, Sugar Free and Fabulous. So you will get a link to join that as well, but I'll put that into the um, into the Facebook group if you wanted to head over there and join as well, if you just wanted to stay in touch, or you can join my, or you can like my Facebook page, Sue Thomas Wellbeing, um, and you'll still see lots of information from me there. Always love to share information. So just to say thank you everybody for joining me this evening. Thank you so much for being such great participants on the Sugar Free Challenge. Really well done to our winners this evening, Linda and Catherine, I'll be in touch with both of you and look out for that person that's going to win that third place uh, on the in the um, Facebook group I'll announce it um, and yes I really wish you I really wish you well hope you will carry on um, and continue on that sugar-free journey even if you do 80% sugar-free your body is going to thank you for it so um, and if anyone does have any questions about FedEx Fabulous do let me know more than happy to join to jump on a telephone call with you um, and uh, um, but to head over to my face to my well to my website to have a look at fed up to fabulous in more detail thank you everyone for joining me this evening have a great rest of the evening won't you and i will speak to you all very soon take care of yourselves bye 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 all bye <laughs>